Welcome everyone to the new Fly Fisher. I'm your host, Bill Spicer. This week, we're in beautiful Algoma country in Northern Ontario, and it's gonna be a mixed bag on this show. First, we start off in the rapids of the St. Mary's River and see if we can get some steelhead. Then we fly out to Timberwolf Lodge for walleye and pike. We'll talk about the flies, the equipment, and all the technique. It's gonna be another great one, folks, so stay with us, we'll be right back. The new fly fisher has been made possible thanks to Algoma Country, that real. Ontario, yours to discover. Orvis sporting traditions. Scientific anglers. Able reels. Ross reels. Superfly, fly fishing for everyone. Over the past 30 years, I've experienced a lot of fishing destinations and have been taught by the best of the best. I've always felt extremely blessed for these experiences, and I pass on my knowledge as a teacher of fly fishing when I'm not taping the new Fly Fisher show. This week, I get to teach again with guests Deborah Corbiel and David Bowskill of Planet D Bloggers. Both Deb and Dave are completely new to fishing. They are both very eager, so this should be fun. We are traveling to Algoma Country and Sault Ste. Marie first to try for the legendary steelhead of the St. Mary's Rapids. Guide Brad Hodkinson will be assisting me there. After that, we travel along the beautiful north shore of Lake Superior to Horn Payne for a short flight into Timberwolf Lodge to see if we can fool a few pike and walleye. Our hosts there are Gary and Cindy Wallace. I'm all ready to go for my first time fly fishing. I'm gonna show you any, this, this knot for any fly or any lure you tie on. Go through the eye. Uh-huh. Okay. Take your tag in and go around five times. One, okay. two, three, three, four, five. Take your tag in and there'll be a loop there just ahead of the, the uh -huh. eye of the. Yeah. Go through the loop, hold it now. Just a little saliva, that, that lubricates it. Okay. And pull it tight. Wow. That's your knot. That's fantastic. All we're gonna do is let the the line straighten up in the current, right. pick up the tip, and throw it upstream. As soon as it lands, you lift up and follow along like that. See how I'm following along? Yeah. That was a hit right there. So just allow it to straighten out. Okay, yeah. put it under your finger and throw upstream. Lift up, and if anything takes that indicator underneath the water, you set the hook. And now what I mean by set, do this. Yep, okay. okay? So, let's start with you, Deb. Oh, okay. Get your set up here. Hold the rod like that and put the line under here. This Hold is control. The okay. If you don't, the, the line will pull out on its own. Lift up the tip, uh -huh. okay? And all you do is flop it over there. And okay. then lift up the line. It okay, looks I'm so gonna easy give you a little short. A little loop. <laughs> okay. Lift it up. To there, lift it and up. just throw it up. Ooh, okay. Okay, and then lift up like that. Let it, let it go. And if anything pulls that under, you set the hook. Set the hook. Okay, so okay. you try that. All right. 
I had my work cut out for me as conditions were not ideal, with rain and very high water. But that said, the fish were in and they were hungry. See, they will hold behind a rock or beside it. Right. If you think about, you know how if you're driving down the road and you got the window open, stick your hand, your hand behind, behind the, wind, the mirror. Right. Same thing happens it, with water and rocks. Yeah, and that makes sense. That's what the sense. fish will do. They'll stay, they'll stay right behind that rock, Just out of the relaxing, current. relaxing, yeah. And they watch for food. If food comes, they'll shoot out, grab the food, come back in. They want to use as few calories as they can that makes to get sense. the food. That was an excellent cast. Ooh, thank you. Let's give them something a little larger okay. to look at, rather than an egg. Okay. What's happening now, because the, the fish are just uh, pretty much spawned now, yep. they're going to be Not feeding up now. And when they feed, it's going to go back to what they ate when they were in the rivers before. I see. Which is uh, stone flies, mayflies. Right. And their natural feed when they were small and in here when they were first young right. was mayflies. I see. Five times around. One, One two. two Three, four, and five. If you hold the line like this and uh -huh. keep it tight, and then you can go around it on itself much easier. That's very cool. Through that's that even way. perfect for sewing, eh? <laughs> little saliva, just because that. If you don't put the saliva it on, slide? it'll it'll stretch the line too much. Oh, I see. And it'll go all curly cool and weaken the line. I see. Going faster, faster, faster. There we go. Okay, now slow down. Oh, okay. He's still there. <laughs> Okay, now if he, if he wants to run, you let him run. He's, he's pulling, now let, let go of the reel, let go of the reel. You keep your fingers away, watch yourself. Just let him like that? Yep. You let him go that far? Now do I Now wind again? in. Down, now and let pull him back. Go. Wind in. Oh, wind in? Yep. Ah. Keep winding, keep, keep winding. Keep winding, okay. Okay, I'm gonna let you. Yeah, I got it. You got him? If you, now, okay, that's it. Now we're gonna try to control them. Let him grab it. Okay. Okay, lift it up. My first fish! Nice. Steelhead. Okay. It feels pretty cool. I don't think I could have caught him without Bill's instruction. <laughs> I had kind of no clue what I was doing. But that's why you go with the professionals, so you learn what to do. Got him. Nope, nope. Oh! Oh! <laughs> oh no! I'm so sorry. Don't be sorry. Oh, I'm sorry. Uh, oh, no. <laughs> shake, give him a slimy handshake. Slimy That's your handshake. Thank you, man. Slimy handshakes. <laughs> slimy handshakes all around. Hey, slimy handshakes. Good fish, too. Big fish. Oh, no. I was just about to get off the rock. <laughs> he nailed that. Bam! The steelhead start roughly about the middle of April on a normal year run through until about the middle of June. Then from the middle of June, right down to almost the middle of August, we have the Atlantic salmon. And then the pinks start coming in. And then the Chinooks come in after the pinks. Then the, the steelhead and the cohos and the Atlantics come back in. And we're, we're good right up until, you know, freeze up. One thing we always say is that, you know, you don't have to go out and try these adventures just by yourself. The best thing that we've found is go and find someone who knows how to do it, you know, and that's a beauty thing about fly fishing. There's go into a fly shop. They go in there, or you can go in there, you can get them to take you out. They have beginner courses that you can take and go out and learn the art of fly fishing. That way, you know, you can decide whether you 
like it or you don't, but you already have the instruction, you have the right way of doing it. There's nothing worse than starting off an adventure, uh, trying to do it yourself and getting all frustrated and then leaving it. Whereas if you go with somebody who has the experience and teaches you the right way to do it, you can make a better judgment of whether you like it or you don't. The next leg of our journey is a very pleasant ride along the north shore of Lake Superior. If you have never taken this route, you are certainly missing something. We then took a very short flight over to Timberwolf Lodge on Nagagami Lake, 25 air miles northwest of Horn Payne. Melissa. Hi, Melissa. Hi. I'll never remember that. My daughter's name is Melissa. Oh, hi there. Hi, I'm Cindy. Hi, Cindy. I'm Dave. With the weather more agreeable, it was time to sit with Deb and Dave to discuss the fly fishing equipment and also to teach them both how to cast. I also instructed them how to fight a fish with a fly rod. This is what you're going to feel. Let's talk a little bit about fly rods and fly reels. Now, the first thing you got to learn about a fly rod is they're on a number system. Now, the numbers go from zero to 15. Mm -hmm. Zero being for little tiny little rainbow trout or little trout right. in, a, in a little tiny creek. They're like a piece of spaghetti almost, a very, very thin, very light, to a 15 that you can go for sailfish or marlin right. with a number 15. This one, what we were catching, the, the, the walleye and the pike is a number eight. And as you can see, it's, it's marked right on there. Number eight weight, they call it a weight, but it's number eight rod. So that's good for pike, walleye, steelhead. The other day when we were yeah. in, the, in the rapids for steelhead, number eight is, is a good weight rod. It's got enough strength to, for that, that size of fish. Mm -hmm. uh, we, don't, we would never use a, a zero weight because it would probably break on those fish. Right. So or, that, the, that's like the strength of the uh, Exactly. The rod. It's the strength of the rod. And the reels are matched the same, uh, but a reel might cover a seven and an eight because okay. the lines are fairly similar. It's, it's the capacity, but you've got to match it in order. And what, what we call balancing, it's just, there's your balance right there. Oh, wow. Okay. Yeah. So you, you don't want it that it's too light that the rod pulls down after a day, your wrist would get sore or it's right. too heavy that it's up here. The front of your hand will get sore. You want it. So it's nice and light in your hand. So all I want you to do is lift up your hand to about your ear and stop and then lay it down. In fly casting, there's no hitchhiking. Okay. No hitchhiking. Thumb is always in the up position. Okay. And if you remember that, you'll always stop the rod at the right spot. Okay. Because it's, it's not this. It's not this. Right. Right. We're trying to make the rod tip go as straight as possible. Okay. And that's what happens when you do that. Okay? Alrighty. I've seen this on the new fly fisher. There you go. Wind in, wind in the line, keeping the line tight, and then lift, when it gets down to about there, lift up. Ooh. And hopefully by then, we got it close enough for you to. Nice job. Oh. Look at the size How of the fish you pulled fish. in. 200 pounder. <laughs> <laughs> Back like this. Okay. Okay. You see the, can you see the yeah. fly? Deb was having a hard time casting the very heavy rod with large flies. This is not easy, even for the more experienced anglers. With novice anglers, it's important to make the experience pleasant. So I asked Gary to troll to make things easier on her. No, nope. you gotta probably gotta hit. No doubt you gotta hit. Yeah, you gotta fish. Yeah, all right. Let's get you up. Okay. Oh, let him let out. It, let him run. Okay. Let him run. Come on. <laughs> that didn't take long. Okay, now wind down and pull up. Oh, it feels like a good one, too. All right, look at the size of it. <laughs> Is that good? Oh, oh. oh, I broke it. What did I do wrong? Not a thing. Oh, okay. <laughs> The fish won. Oh. Good job, Deb. Oh, thanks. Well, you know I what happened? Him. 
He bit beyond 18 inches of wire leader. Wow. He bit beyond 18 inches of wire leader. Ate, ate the cow. whole thing. He ate that much of it. Wow. Oh. <laughs> well, I saw him anyway. You got to look at him. He was yeah, a good he size one. He looks pretty big, but. <laughs> it, uh. Yeah, that just broke off because I didn't feel like I. No, no, it, it let go. They got teeth and he bit. I had a wire leader on there. What happened? I could see his bite mark right there. Holy cow. Oh. Yeah, that was like so fast. It was just like <laughs> gone. I was like, what'd I do? Now, do you remember the feeling on that? Yeah, okay. definitely. Now, I'm going to explain to the camera what we're doing. We're, we're trolling with Deb right now because the conditions are such that I, uh, floating lines aren't working and she's a very much a beginner. And to cast sinking lines, it, it's very much an, uh, an intermediate or advanced technique. So I said, let's troll and just put a big fly out there and let her get the, the idea of catching a fish. And I don't think we went 100 feet and she got a fish. So this is a good start. Let's, let's try that again. I'm All gonna right. rig her up with a little longer section of wire leader. All right. Now with wire leader, this is coated wire leader. It's the same knot, but instead of going around five times, I'm only going around three. One, Two, three, back through the eye. A little bit of lubricant and pull it tight. Nautable wire leader, same knot. Okay, now if you remember if he wants to run, you let him run. Okay. Right. Oh, can I go over on this side? Yes, you can. You fight him anywhere you want. All right. He's got the boat in, in he's got the boat in neutral. Boy, he's not putting up much of a fight oh, yet. Oh, he's just running towards you, that's all. Oh, I see, okay. <laughs> Pike are famous for uh, for fighting right at the end. Oh, okay. See, he's coming right at us. Yeah. Yeah, there he is. Oh, I'm... You know what it might be? Wow. It's a walleye. Oh, wow. It's a good size walleye. Now I let him go? No, just keep him right there. Okay. Bring him up, bring him up. Okay, okay, now no, not right out of the water. <laughs> now, I'm gonna get you to back up a bit. Me? Yep. And lift up the tip. Bring him towards me. Yeah, that's it. Ooh. <sighs> hey, buddy. Yeah. Goes, Don't call me buddy. <laughs> Do you want to eat him? Yes. Is he a good eater? Oh, yeah. Yes, yes. That oh, wow. is a walleye. Now, if you look, you can see the teeth in there. Whoa. That's the last thing a minnow sees. Oh, my gosh. Right, the last thing a minnow sees. <laughs> Don't stick your fingers in there. Yowza, they got a lot of teeth. <laughs> I got my first walleye. You got your first walleye. There we go. Fish on! Oh, how does it feel? Feels good. <laughs> Feels good to have something on. Yeah. There we go. Nice bent rod. Keep it. Now, you want to raise up the rod a bit, a little higher. That's it. We don't want a straight rod. Right. Because that'll break the line. OK, what have we got? We haven't looked at them yet. No, not yet. What have we got? It's anybody's Whoa. guess. Oh, see when he run? Then let him run. Let him go. Let now, him that's go. telling me that's a pike. That's telling me that's a pike only because it just took, turned around took off when right. it seen the boat. Tip up and. Keeping the pressure. Oh, up. and it's a decent pike, too. A oh, it's a good one. Well, let him run, let him run. Okay, yeah. good. Hi. Oh, thank you. Now, when I tell you to lift up, you lift up, and I'm going to net him for you. Okay. See what happens when yeah. I say let him run? Isn't that something? He's like, okay, I'll run. <laughs> okay, now lift up the tip of the rod and see if you can drag him. Don't reel in right now. Lift up the tip, drag him to me. Lift up the tip, drag him to me. And we got him. That's right. a good fish. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. All right. Uh, all right. That's now a good that's, looking fish. That's a good fish. Woo. Woo hoo. Look at those teeth, man. Look at those teeth. Yeah. Holy smokes. Okay. That's
that's out. Now, that's a pretty good pipe there, David. All right. All right. Get your hand slimy on him. Oh, Put he's Put your other slimy, hand underneath. Man. Put your hand underneath. Oh, he's slimy, man. <laughs> How do you like but that? Hey, look at that. Look at those teeth. <laughs> My first pike. We're going to just torpedo him more head first in. Okay. Ready? Ready? Wait. Um, yeah. Ready? Go. Woo! Off he goes. Woo! Slimy hand. Slimy hand. <laughs> <laughs> That's great. That's great. Yeah. Wow, awesome. You love that thrill of, you know, you bringing fought him in. Him that was awesome. Perfect. You oh, fought him you. perfect. You let him run when he wanted to run. When you were able to wind him in, you wound him in. Perfect. Perfect. Outstanding. Good guidance. Good teacher. That's what it is. <laughs> Dave and I are just two regular people. That's what we really like to focus on because it was my dream to be an adventurer. I remember I always wanted to have adventurer after my name, but I thought, oh, I'm not that person that's done everything since I was 10 years old. I wasn't raised in the bush. But if you work with the right professionals, have a guide, go out with people who know what they're doing, you can have a great adventure. And Dave and I, we find that we learn these new skills when we're working with people like Bill Spicer. He can show us the right way to do, to try fly yeah. fishing. And that's what we want to encourage people. They you, Don't worry if you don't feel that you have enough experience. Just give it a try. I always say an adventurer always had to start somewhere. <laughs> wow, did we ever have a great time. The one thing to remember when you're bringing in new people to the sport is to be patient. Don't marathon with them. Make it an enjoyable experience. For more information on this show and others in our series, visit us on the web at thenewflyfisher.com. From all of us here at The New Fly Fisher, thanks for joining us. Tight lines, and we'll see you next time. The New Fly Fisher has been made possible thanks to Algoma Country, That Real. Ontario, yours to discover. Orvis Sporting Traditions. Scientific Anglers. Able Reels. Ross Reels, Superfly, fly fishing for everyone. To learn more about the new Fly Fisher, our locations, contests, news, and much more, come visit and like us on Facebook. <laughs>